All right, hi everybody. Uh, Kenny Mack here from Empowered Recreation. I've got with me today Robin R. Robbins to do a little goal setting segment. Um, Robin's helped me a lot in my own personal business and my own personal life as well. Um, so I'm excited to bring her along and introduce her to my clients, my people, um, especially the new year goal setting. It's all relative. It's all important for um, making 2013 your best year yet. So. Um, Robin, why don't you go ahead and tell them a little bit about your business and what you do, and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, great. Thanks a lot, Kenny. Um, it's great to be here. Thank you for joining us, everyone. Uh, I do. I am the owner and president of RRR Consulting and Publishing. Uh, I've been helping businesses and individuals succeed beyond their expectations for about 25 years now. So anything I can do to empower others, that's what we're going to do today. So if you'd like, we can just jump right into the goal setting. Does that sound good to you, Ken? Yeah, sounds like a plan. Um, goal setting, how to make a plan and stick to it by Robin R. Robbins. All righty then. <laughs> Thanks again. Well, well I'm just going to jump right in here by explaining a little bit um, about goal setting and how our brains work. We have a um, what we call a RAS, it's a reticular activating system. And that's RAS, and what that is is basically the way your subconscious works. And it's been proven that whatever you give the subconscious to go to, to go to work on in vivid detail, that it works for you day and night. That means while you're sleeping, while you're awake. Best way to describe that is your body is basically like the hardware, like your computer system. Your subconscious mind is your software. And your software functions only to the level in a computer that it is programmed. Well, your, main, your mind works the same way. So in goal setting, what you want to do is define your goals in clear, vivid detail, as much detail as you can possibly come up with for each goal. And while you're sleeping, everything you're doing all day long, your subconscious mind is working on this for you. The mind cannot tell the difference between vivid imagination and reality. So what that means is, if you close your eyes and you think of a dill pickle, a crisp, <laughs> dill. crunchy dill pickle, and you're going to think about biting into that and it snaps and you start to chew that pickle, oh man, you can just taste it. And now if you open your eyes, did your mouth start watering? For most people, Mind yes. It. If you don't like dill, if you don't like dill pickles, you cringed quite a bit. <laughs> Right. Basically, that is the reticular activating system. That is the subconscious part of your mind at work. And that's the perfect example of giving it vivid details, and it, has, it does not know the difference. It, doesn't, it, it believes that you're actually biting and chewing into that dill pickle. Your mouth starts salivating. That's your reticular activating system. So, Robin, um, is, is that kind of the same if I'm about to do a heavy lift or... Yeah, that's a perfect example. So if I'm about to do a heavy lift, I visualize over and over in my head me actually standing up with that weight. That's kind of the same thing. Exactly. Mm -hmm. That is part uh, a piece of it. Yes. Okay. The one thing that the way to do this is you need to know. What, there are three keys, of course. So you need to know exactly what you want. So in that particular case, you know you want to lift that weight. Okay. Mm -hmm. You should have written it down at some point in time in a goals journal of some sort, or written it down on a piece of paper, knowing that you want to lift a certain amount of weight by a certain date. And so when you go into the gym and you're visualizing it and you're seeing it and you are telling your mind this is where we're going with this, your body automatically reacts to what you tell your mind to do. It says, "Okay, let's do this." Now, obviously, you would have had to do the work in that case to get strong enough to lift that weight. <laughs> right. You and to, pro to progress and do the proper things to progress. Wouldn't that be nice? However, visual yeah, visualization is very, very important. You want to make sure that you write things down in detail, every, as much detail as you can possibly come up with. And then the third key, of course, is you're going to make a plan. If, if it's a larger goal, you're going to break it down a little bit. And you're going to work on it daily. So how do we get started? I get asked all the time, what do we do to get started? Your first step, of course, is to decide exactly what you want in each key area of your life. And we have about seven categories that we're going to go through, and those would be the key areas. So our first category that we would look at would be our income and our financial. Oh, yeah. And so we would write a category, and we would say, income financial, how much would you like to make per year? How much would you like to be saving? 
uh, per month, per week. How much would you like to be investing per year? How much would you like to be giving? Um, you want to go through all of your financial goals, and, and ideally for, on, in financial, a year, uh, one year, three year, five year, sometimes 10 year, um, but of course those have to be backed down and chunked down into smaller goals. Our second category is business and career. So what area would, do you want to advance in your career or what level in your business? Would you like to go from a supervisor to a manager? Would you like to start your own business? Would you like to advance your current business to global markets? Uh, there's all kinds of things you can think of in business and career depending upon where you're currently at in your own life. Uh, supervisor to manager. Um, you know, you want to take over the company, but um, I'd suggest you do that in a nice way. Right. <laughs> Our third category is your fun and recreational goals. So that's vacations, vacation homes, golfing retreats, um, um, swimming with fun dolphins. leisurely things. Yeah, swimming with dolphins. Yeah, oh, I did that. There you are. <laughs> yeah, there I am. I snuck that in there. Did you like that? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> Just goes to show, so, you know, um, set your goals and make your dreams come true. Yeah, and actually, I, the reason I put that in there is that was a long-time goal for me, actually, and I accomplished it this year, and the way I accomplished it by using this exact set of system that I'm showing you now. Mm -hmm. It's exactly how I've accomplished all the goals, and I can honestly tell you that I have accomplished all the goals I've ever set in my lifetime. I have not, however, met every single target date, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more, but... There is no failure in goal setting. If you miss a target date, you just move the date to a more appropriate time. You do not look at it as a failure. Again, the mind just says, okay, we're still working on this. And that's what happened in this case. Um, it took quite a few years, but I, I did manage to go swim with dolphins this year. So I, can, I am a living testament to what I'm teaching. So, Robin, you're saying rather than saying, oh, screw it, I, I couldn't make it, and then almost, you know, defeating yourself and giving up um, – you know, let's say, for example, that my goal is to lose weight, and if I have a cheat day, like I slip up some emotional problems or something pops up and I just let loose and eat all the wrong things for one day, you're saying don't just give up on your goal long term, but stick to it, and just because that one day, don't let that ruin the whole overall picture. Exactly. You want to do that in every case in your life, actually. You must view this as um, a learning experience and a growth experience, so we all fall short at some point in time, and myself included, um, how many times I probably could have gone on swam with dolphins but chose to do other things. Well, that was just the way I chose to handle things. But I kept that goal in front of me. There's another long-term goal that took me um, about 15 years, and, and I can tell that story that's a jet ski that I wanted way back in 1992 when they first came out. Um, I was very, you know, working a very successful job, had plenty of money to buy this jet ski, was totally single, was able to do this. So... I was going to um, buy a brand new 1992 Kawasaki jet ski 550 SX with a reed motor, mm -hmm. and I knew that's what I wanted. Well, I gotta get this little thing out of my screen here. Can you see that? <laughs> no. We had an extra box pop up on us, so I had to take care of that. Sorry. Okay. So I was set out to buy this jet ski. I knew exactly which jet ski I wanted. Stand up jet ski. I wanted it for quite a while, and in in the process of shopping. Um, I lost my job and so decided not to buy the jet ski at that time and, and through the course of my life I ended up using um, you know my savings and everything and then finding another job of course and getting, getting better all more money all over again however as things changed then I had a, a, a child and got married and got a house etc 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 but I still always kept that jet ski goal on paper in front of me I knew exactly which jet ski I wanted so in I think it was 2007 um, I finally decided my boys are old enough. Let's let we can do this, this something we can do together. So I went out and I bought the exact jet ski. The ninety two. Yeah, yes, a ninety two <laughs> with a reed motor. The exact jet ski that I had always wanted. So that's, great. that's a good example that took quite a few years. That's a goal that you know took quite a few years to accomplish, but that's because I was choosing to move that date out. Right. And you know, other things that happen in my life. So when you're talking about working out and let's say something else happens, I mean, people have a death in their family or something happens and their, their whole persona and their mood may change and they have to work through that. Well, that's a natural life expectancy thing. It just happens. 
and or you know your car breaks and you can't get to the gym that day or whatever it is that would cause you to say mess up or you know that goal on that particular day um, it, it's not a failure all it is is a learning experience you say okay now I carry it forward to tomorrow I just do better tomorrow that's all I do so in that case, um, you know, in trying to lose weight, I think it's really good to just say, okay, of course, you, you know, from your mindset to succeed, you don't want to continue to just take, say that's okay to mess up. Right. <laughs> you want to continue to meet that goal. You want but to keep that than, goal in front of you so that you. Yeah, but you're saying I'm sorry, keep it your goal rather than beat yourself up over it. Um, just oh, definitely. Of course, the next right. There's no, it just. You should look at it as there is no failure in goal setting. You just move that date. You just keep that target in front of you. And if you keep that target in front of you, that subconscious mind's going to work all the time. And that's actually our fourth category. Our fourth category is health and fitness. And of course, that's um, how many times do you want to work out? Uh, where do you want to work out? What is it? How much would you like to weigh? Would you like to take up walking, running? Uh, would you like to take up weightlifting? And as you can see, I snuck in Empowered Recreations mm -hmm. photo as well. <laughs> um, so would you like to eat more organic foods, more healthy foods, take vitamins a couple times a day, um, eat less of something? Those are the types of goals that you want to write down in health and fitness and decide exactly what you want. Remember, the mind must have a very, very clear target of what it is you want. We don't focus on what you don't want because what you focus on, you create. It comes to you. You want to focus on what you want. And I've heard that too, and that's kind of why, you know, there's the negative people that you, everybody knows them, the person in your life that just no matter what, what that you talk to them about, that if you call them any day, something wrong had gone on. And it's almost like they're inviting that by continuously being in that pessimistic mood. I actually guarantee that that you are inviting it if you continue that mood. Um, it, I like get asked a lot of times because I teach personal development as well, and I get asked how do you get out of that funk? And what I say is you 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 recognize the trigger when that's happening to you. Once you recognize it happening, you find your go-to, whether that's a book. Um, you know, for those um, who are biblical or spiritual, then they're spiritual you know, reading, um, or you go to YouTube and you listen to, to some inspiring music, some inspiring speakers, um, they're all on YouTube for you there to look at, you know, to watch and listen to for free. Find a go-to that gets you, quote, unquote, out of that funk. And when you recognize it, you feel that trigger coming on, whatever's caused it doesn't matter. It's just that you just want to go deal with it so that you get back into that good mood and going forward on your goals. Robin, this is really helpful for me. Um, I was in one of those moods all last week. It seemed like the bank account was ugly on both fronts. It seemed like, and my car broke down. My relationship just didn't seem as happy-go-lucky as it normally was. Um, even when I realized I was in a bad mood and I wanted to go to a go-to, I kept reverting back to like, no, oh, I'm mad because of this. Um, so, you know, kind of help me with that, I guess. I think that's, um, in my my belief is that is human nature, that we all go through those times and those points. I know I've been there myself, and most of the successful people that I talk to have been there, and they would say the same thing. And again, that's you recognized it. Um, you probably knew what your go-tos were, but you hadn't quite maybe created the habit to just fight it out with everything you've got and go to that. It's it's sort of the same as what you talked about where um, you mess up on the workout, you know, and then you go, oh, I just give up. Well, you don't give up just because the relationship isn't good and, and the car broke and uh -huh. the bank account wasn't right. You get up the next day and you move forward. Okay. And if you're and so you must I mean we are accountable to ourselves and to ourselves only as as far as that goes. So it's up to us. If we're in that funk and we're stuck in that funk and I know I've been there before myself and I've done the same thing you just said. I I don't want to. I know what my go-to is, but I just don't feel like it. I yeah. want to sit here have my. I want to have my pity party. Right. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> Poor well, that's me. fine and dandy. If that's what I want to do, fine and dandy. That's my right. However, I must take responsibility for that. It's up to me to take responsibility for everything that happens in my life. Therefore, if I take responsibility for that and I say, okay. If that's what you want to do, you know how to fix it, but you're choosing not to, then I have no one to blame whatsoever for the situation I'm in and what tomorrow holds, do I? Right. So then I, I you know, and so I kind of tend to 
tell myself that if I start to do that. I sort of scold myself and say, okay, but you know what tomorrow's going to be like if you yeah. don't go to your go-to. And my mind says, okay, um, yeah, let's go to the go-to. We don't want tomorrow like today. Yeah. <laughs> so my recommendation is, again, if you, if you are actually following these steps and writing down your goals and keeping them in front of you, eventually that, that doesn't really become an issue. You, um, the more you keep your goals in front of you and the things that you want out of life, the more excited you're going to be, and when those quote-unquote funky days come along, it's much easier to get out of them a lot quicker. Okay. That's so great. I appreciate category. that. Oh, you bet. My pleasure. Our fifth category is relationships. Hmm, that's funny you mentioned that, huh? Mm, perfect. <laughs> well, what would our ideal relationships look like? Now, a lot of people do not even sit down and try to figure this out. Um, I always say if you're married... Or, or in a relationship, you, know, you should detail how you could improve it. What can you do? You are accountable for you. Not, we're not focusing on the other person. This is what you want. How could it be better and how could you make it better, no matter what it is? What type of relationship you're in? If you're single, who would be your ideal partner? You, you should be defining that ideal partner in you know color of hair, height, their personality, their character traits. You do not focus on what you don't want. Ninety percent of the people out there who are looking for an ideal partner are sitting here saying, I don't want a guy who's like this, and I don't want a girl who does that, and right. I don't want a guy who's this, and I don't want a girl. Guess what they're getting? Yeah. They're getting exactly what they're saying they don't want because that is what they're focusing on. The typical, so you want to, sorry, the typical um, woman that picks the deadbeat guy or or the, or that picks the abusive guy constantly, she goes to find, always seems to find a, an abusive relationship, for example. And part of that is she continues to say she doesn't want it. Well, you're, what you're saying, our words do definitely have power because our subconscious mind is always listening. It never sleeps. When we're sleeping, it's not sleeping. It's always going, which is in, part of the proof in that is dreams, and that we have dreams. That tells us that our mind is still always doing something. Mm -hmm. And so in, in mothers who have children, you know, they sleep at a certain level because so they can recognize those cries of those babies. Our mind is always, always, always listening. And so the things that you speak and the things that you write, it pays attention to. And that's why you want to focus on what you want. And you want to detail out what you want. You need to know what you want in each one of these areas of your life. And if it's family relationships, if you're struggling with, with siblings or children or parents, you want to write out what the ideal relationship with those people would look like. What would it look like to you? It's not what it would look like to anybody else. There's no right or wrong answers. It's what it looks like to you, the ideal relationship in each one of these cases. That's very empowering. Uh, it gives me a good feeling inside to think, you know what, I'm ultimately in charge. Exactly. That is, a, you are in charge, 100% accountable for your life. <laughs> and this is, this is something that has just helped me get through so many things in life, is by con continuously sitting down and saying, I need to focus on my goals. I need to make sure I'm following what I'm teaching. And I know that if, if and when I do, and as long as I stick to this, um, everything works out great. It just works out fa fabulous, even if target dates are missed. However, if I let it go for a week, two weeks, three weeks, I start noticing that I am getting in that funk and that things aren't quite going like they were. And then I try to figure out, okay, what is that? Why is that happening? Oh, I didn't read my goals for the last three weeks. I didn't focus. <laughs> so I'll show you the rest of the part of that is, is focusing and reading them daily. Well, we're going to go through the categories first, and then we'll get to that part. Okay. So our sixth category is your personal. And these are the funnest. Everybody loves, everybody can feel like a whole book on these because this is just whatever you want because you want it. There doesn't have to be a rhyme or reason or anything. It's just what do you want? A new car. Of course, you can see the what I want. I see it. <laughs> Lots of pink yeah. going on. Yeah, well, I'm a hot pink kind of girl. I see and so whether you want a new house, um, new shoes, we've got guys' shoes and girls' shoes in there, so that made that fair. I couldn't find a guy's dress. So, <laughs> um, <laughs> I didn't find a suit either. I would um, look good in that one, I guess. Um, <laughs> the personal growth. If you wanted to buy something just for you to help grow personally, that's why the psychology of achievement is in here. It's a wonderful, neat little um, audio by Brian Tracy. So these are examples of things that you just put into your personal goals of what you want just because you want it. Fine and dandy. Doesn't, doesn't have 
to make anybody else happy. It's just for you. In your seventh category, we have our contribution and legacy. And what that is is, who do you want to leave the world? Or what would you like to contribute to in order to make the world a better place while you're here? You know, do you want to start a nonprofit? Do you want to donate large sums of money to your favorite charities each year? You want to write a book and leave that as a legacy with a whole bunch of information for people to read long after you're gone? Do you want to volunteer at a soup kitchen? You know, do you want to go um, help uh, needy children? Whatever it is that really speaks to your heart, what is your contribution to your community and those around you, and what kind of a legacy would you like to leave after you're gone? And those are the types of things you want to detail in that category. My mind is spinning. That's one. That's probably my favorite category <laughs> right there. I want the world to remember Kenny Mac. Yeah, exactly. Well, we all want to be remembered. Honestly, everyone wants to leave a legacy and to to contribute, but a lot of people are, are sort of lost on how to get started or how to get there. And it's really not that difficult, especially if you start writing it down, because as I'll show you, when you write it down and you put it down in detail, things start happening. It, it, it will just blow your mind, really, at how well your subconscious mind goes to work for you when you give it a very clear target. The clearer the target, the quicker the result. And again, that we're back to that visualization part of um, you know, people who want to lose weight. If they would put a picture of them at their ideal weight or you know, someone, if they had never been to that ideal weight, someone who is at that ideal weight and they have that in front of them all the time, that is very, very powerful for the subconscious mind. It says, okay. I want that, and that's what we're moving towards. So you can't hit a car target that you can't see. If you're out target shooting, you need to be able to see your target. And that's a really good way to, to view it from the subconscious is that the subconscious mind must have a target. You give it a target, you give it a date, it says, okay, oh, now I know what we're aiming for. So, of course, the biggest key is to write them down, which you've heard me say several times now because <laughs> it's right. the biggest key. You can't hit a target that you can't see. Now. A lot of the gentlemen like to use um, the three by five cards, and most of the ladies that I know. And it, it this is is not um, you know a general rule. This is there are exceptions, but most of the ladies like a journal or a notebook. I per personally use a small little journal, and I have the tabs in there for each category that I've given you the seven categories, and then I go through and I write my goals in each category. And there's a reason that the guys like to use the three by five cards is as we go through this, um, once you write them down and you define them in detail, we want to set deadlines. This is very important. Um, we have a lot of people who say, I want to, what's your goal? I want to lose weight. That's not the correct way to set a target for your subconscious mind. Co correct way to do that is to say, I will weigh 140 pounds, or you choose the pounds, yeah. by September 30th, 2013. You say, I will weigh this much by this date. I, yep, we do that with our clients. We definitely make sure that they're, you know, there's an objective. It's not just, I want to look better. Well, mm -hmm. can you define no. that? Can we take a, I guess, that, you know, at one point we'll say, well, let's take a picture of what you look like now and see if you're closer, but... I'd rather that you gave a more specific this body type or this goal weight or, you know, so it's just what you're saying. I'm, keep I going. guarantee you that if you want your clients to hit their goal, this is how you do it. Okay. You get them to narrow it down. They must see it for themselves. They must say, I will weigh this much by this much. Because what that does is if they meet it, let's say they, they missed it by five pounds or they miss it by, you know, two weeks or three weeks or a month or whatever, it doesn't matter. All you're doing is going to move that date out. You're going to say, okay, we're really close on September 30th. Wow, we're at 135 pounds. We, or we have 145 pounds, sorry. Yeah. We have five more to go. Come on, how, many, how long do you think it will take to get that last five off? And they go, oh, I can do that by October. All right, we just move the date out. That's all we do. Yeah. You're almost there. You don't stop. You don't say, oh, I didn't make it. No, you just you push a little further. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't make it. Let's go get some Oreos. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's not how you reach a goal. Okay. And instead, you have a lot of people who will say, I just want a new car. I want a new car. You go, what kind of car you want? No, I want a Cadillac. Okay. Well, you know, every kind of Cadillac in the world out there, you've got to be able to define it. They must say, I will own a 2012 Royal Blue. They, you want color. Now, guys are really great at coming up with 
the stuff on the cars. Yeah. Because the ladies are the ones that they just go, I don't know, I want a new car, I want a red Cadillac. No, that don't work, sweetie. <laughs> we, we, want, we want color, make, model, interior, what type of seats, what type of wheels. That's why you see that hot pink Mustang. That is right. the exact hot pink Mustang. There's no doubt about it. I know what I want. Well, that's what you need, your stereo, your sound system. Your entertainment. What, what it smells like want. inside the car. Yes. What and you... then, of course, you find a picture of it and you stick it in front of you on the refrigerator or make a vision board, and that's even more powerful because that subconscious mind sees it all the time. <sighs> that vision board, that's something I'm, that's new to me and I can't wait to get going on. Oh, yeah, I have uh, my vision board right here in front of me, right in my office. You betcha. It's that hot pink Mustangs right there on the top. <laughs> So what is your suggestion on the big vision board? Do, I don't know if there's anything on this beyond this, but do you make it like a big poster board or do you like to keep like the wallet size so you can keep it in your wallet at all times? Or maybe both? Well, and see, there's, there's, the best way is what, well, whatever way works for you. And everybody's different. So what we like to do is give you a bunch of suggestions. And so the ones you just mentioned are perfect. Um, some people keep like a little tiny photo album or a little tiny scrapbook that they can flip through the pages. And so they have them all right there that they can just look at in their, when they're stuck in traffic or sitting in the airport or at their lunch hour. You know, they, The more you keep it in front of you, the faster you're going to hit that target. Because once again, the subconscious mind is always paying attention. So when you're not, when you're focused on your workout, and you have put this really cool car in your mind and the subconscious mind says, man, I want that car, I want that car, we're going for that car, but you're over here doing your workout. When you're done with your workout or as you're coming out of your workout, boom, some really cool idea is going to come to you of a way for you to get that car or of a way for you to move closer to that car. Mm -hmm. So that's how it works. It's always working. The more of a picture you give it. So for me, I have a great big poster board here in my office, and so whatever I'm doing, it's always right here in front of me. And the dolphin has been taken off now because we accomplished that one. Complete. So. That's got to feel <laughs> yeah, that really one's good. Done. So, it, you know, the more clarity, detail, photos, whatever you can give the subconscious to pay attention to, it's focus. It's what you focus on will come to you the more you focus on it. And it, that's been proven, you know, since the beginning of time. Doesn't matter your belief system. Doesn't matter, you know, um, if you want to follow brain science or any of that. It just is what it is. And we do have a conscious and subconscious mind. The subconscious is always working. And of course, we want to be specific in our deadlines. How far? We like to say, let's start with 90 days because that's like a season. It's just out of reach, but it's not out of sight. So if you can, like when you're setting your weight goals for your clients, you know, is a good example. Mm -hmm. Let's start with 90 days. What can we do in 90 days? What is a realistic picture for 90 days? And you set that first one, and they hit it or they come close to it or they're really close. And then all of a sudden, now let's set a six-month one. You see, it gets more exciting because, yeah. ooh, you can see it happening. Oh, in I can do days, that. I can do that. Exactly. And then you go from there. So it's like you chunk them down a little bit if you have to. So let's say it was a five-year goal. You know, let's say somebody had to lose 300 pounds and you know, healthily wait to do it. We yeah. knew it was going to take five years, but then right. we do it in a healthy way. Okay, fine. Let's back that down. Um, let's, how much could we do in 90 days? Then let's how much could we do in six months? So you, set, you would set several targets there mm -hmm. and break it down all the way along the way. I've, and again, I've already said. You, I've heard of Sorry to interrupt you, Robin. I, I've heard a saying, um, how do you eat an elephant one bite yeah, at a time? Yeah, one bite at a time. Yeah. At a time. <laughs> that, Brian Tracy uses that too. Yeah. yeah, he talks about that. And the fourth step, after we have decided what we want in each category of our life, those seven categories, we've defined what we want. We've got a lot of detail. We might have pictures. Okay. Um, we've got them written down and we've set target dates. Okay. Now, we want to make sure that they're in front of us daily. So everybody likes to do this differently. Um, the vision boards are huge because they're right there. If that's like an office that you spend a lot of time in, or your refrigerator, you you know you go there a lot, or that you're in your kitchen cooking and, or something. So everybody has something that works differently for them. But the idea is to make sure that your goals are in front of you at an absolute minimum of once a day, and preferably twice a day, once in the morning and once before you go to sleep. And it, the most important for me is usually before I go to sleep because I know that my, the last thing that you put into your mind before retiring, the subconscious mind works on for several hours after you're asleep. So it's, it's 
continually like you're planting a seed and it's you know watering it for you while you're sleeping and so when you wake up and as you go about your day the next day things things that were right in front of you that you never ever noticed before all of a sudden you go oh why didn't I think of that that was here for like the last six months I could have used that idea <laughs> That's exactly how it works. It just blows your mind that if you follow these steps and you do this, amazing things start to happen. And you're constantly putting those seeds into your mind. So now we're kind of back to the reason why um, a lot of people like to use the three by five cards. They're easy to flip through. One goal, one goal, one goal, one goal, one goal, one goal. Read them through. Um, a lot of guys can carry them, you know, in a little box or in their pocket or whatever. Um, Brian Tracy, he, he says, and I really love this idea, is you take your number one goal for the year, whatever that is, your biggest goal, and you want that with you everywhere you go. Well, for me, mine, you know, we have smartphones. This is the coolest thing ever now. We have smartphones. There is a goals app, it's, and I think it's called Reaching Your Goals is the one I'm using. So I've put my top three goals for the year in there, and I've set alerts for it to pop up several times during the day, and you can also add pictures. And so these pictures come up to remind me several times throughout the day on my smartphone. That's great. What did you say um, the app was, my top Robin? Goals. I believe, I can take a quick look here. Um, I believe it's called Reaching Your Goals. Let me check. Reaching Your Goals? That's a great. That, yeah, I think, th I that believe that's valuable. the one I'm using. That sounds very valuable. Oh, it's, it's awesome. I love it. I'm, I don't usually do a lot of apps on the phone, but of course for, you know, I totally believe in goal setting, and this really has helped me. It, I love the fact that they're popping up in front of me all day, reminding me that I don't have to carry anything but my phone, obviously. Mm -hmm. And you can set, you know, music reminders or a specialized reminder or whatever you want using the app. So it re becomes a lot of fun for your top three goals for the year. Putting that picture I, on it, though. I mean, now you've added that visual yes, value exactly. that you've talked about this whole time. So. And if you didn't want, to, here's the other part of that. If you didn't want to, what I've done with mine is I went ahead and wrote out, sat down and wrote out my goals like I'm teaching you how to do here on paper in my little book. I use a journal instead of three by five cards. And then I went in and I transferred all those, typed them all into my phone, and I added pictures to them in my phone. So, and some of them have alerts and some of them don't. The top three have alerts. I want those up in front of me several times a day. Well, now I have my goals book that I go through, you know, once in the morning, once in the evening, and I can flip through and keep my goals in front of me. But also, several times throughout the day, I'm getting my top three goals in front of me continuously with visual pictures. And that I will, that's just going to make such a huge, huge difference. It's already brought up several ideas in the middle of the day that I wouldn't have thought of <laughs> if I hadn't had them popping up in front of me. That's great, Robin. So when we reach a goal, this is a real exciting fun thing, and it gets to be really, really fun. Um, you reach a goal, let's say the 90-day goal, and that's why I like to use that weight goal, because that seems to be what a lot of people are struggling with, especially at the first of the year in, in your business, that they come to you for that. Um, if you have that weight goal and that 90-day target and they hit it, or they came within ounces, whatever, okay, celebrate. <laughs> and when you reach a goal, you want to check it off. What I, the reason I love the book, having a journal with the tabs, is so that I can go through and check things off, and then I can flip through and see all these monstrous you know, check marks in a different color. And I, that gets me excited, because at the end of the year, I sit down and write down an accomplishment list. And so, wow, when you realize how many you've accomplished, you just get so excited. Yeah. So obviously, if you, if you reached a weight goal, hey, go buy that new dress or pair of slacks or that suit. Um, try, you know, I try to tell people on a weight goal, not don't make it an ice cream sundae. <laughs> make it a, a dress or shoes or something that you couldn't fit into before that really matter, you know, matters and doesn't kind of sabotage the goal. Yeah, it's value now. Like, that's why you were doing it, so you could fit into that smaller shoe. Exactly, exactly. And if it's a relationship goal, if, if you just work really hard on making your relationship sweeter and it gets better and better and better, hey, go Go on a weekend getaway or even a one night stay in a hotel, something. It doesn't have to be extravagant. You could even do a, a picnic basket that you just took to the park on a sunny day, you know, or whatever. But do something at, with just focused time for the individual who's in that relationship that you did make it better in whatever way. And as you're doing this, um, that's another reason I like using the journal with the tabs is 
as you're reading them daily and you're keeping them in front of you, all of a sudden more and more and more goals start popping up in your head. As you're checking them off, ooh, now I want to add this. Ooh, I did that. Now I want to do this. Ooh. And then also you'll be going through there and you'll go, no, that one doesn't matter anymore. I've decided I'm going to sell that or whatever. I don't want to do that. Um, so you would cross them off. You know they no longer matter. But it keeps you very, very focused on what you want in life. And that brings it to you a lot faster. I like that. So the conclusion is, <laughs> of course, is to resolve that no matter what, you won't give up. Now, I've written here that it's been proven that the mind must have at least 30 days of uninterrupted consistency in order to begin to form a particular activity as a habit. Well, the, the truth of that is science has proven that it, they say about 21 consecutive days of, of non-interrupted um, habitual activity. So something that you're going to do the same every day for 21 days without interruption, then the mind starts to form it as a habit. It becomes a habit. You just start getting up without thinking about it, in other mm -hmm. words. Um, like an example is for me, get up and walk um, 30 minutes in the morning. Pretty soon it just becomes a habit. I don't even think about it. You know, my I just get up, I immediately grab my shoes, I put them on, fire up the treadmill. I'm not even thinking. I'm grabbing my gym roll and stuff, I'm plugging it in, and I'm going. It, it's just such a normal part of my day. But in order to do that, it usually takes about 21 days of uninterrupted activity. So I have it here as 30 days because we expect some people to interrupt, to, like you said, mess up on a workout or <laughs> you know, on a day, have a day in there. So what I like to do is challenge people and say, well, you try it for 30 days. Everything that I've just taught you here, I guarantee you, if you try it for 30 days, it becomes such a part of you because you get excited. You get excited when you see those check marks or like um, uh, Jack Canfield. He does his on 3x5 cards, and he likes to have shoe boxes. He has, shoe boxes. he has a shoe box for one goal, for all the goals that he's going to accomplish, and then he has a shoe box for all the ones that have been accomplished so that when he accomplishes one, he writes a check mark and the date on it, and then he puts it over in another box. So at the end of the year, he goes through the quote-unquote accomplishment box, and he, he gets so excited about seeing this pile of cards, you know? How rewarding. <laughs> yeah, so everybody has a different way of doing it. You just have to do what works best for you and what you think would get you excited because I guarantee you it really does get you excited. The more, the more goals you accomplish, the more you get excited about accomplishing more goals. So I challenge you to try it for 30 days and then come back to me and see what you found out. Yeah, I'm pumped. Um, Robin, this has been outstanding content. I appreciate it. I've got notes. I'm notes to work on my scrapbook, my vision board. I've got, you know, I've got a life plan to put together. Um, a ton of notes here. And what I really like about it is it's not like foo-foo out there to... Um, you know, I'm pretty into the new age myself, but it's not too crazy to, it, you know, there's science behind this. You've, you've really put together a great presentation. And for, on behalf of me and all of my clients, we really appreciate you coming on. Thank you very much. It was a pleasure to be here. And I, I guarantee you that the system will work if you, I would love to hear all the results you come up with in 30 days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Robin, just for the listeners, how can my clients get some more of this great stuff from you? Um, I have two websites. The easiest is at robinrobbins.com. You can see down, let's put this back up down here, um, is my web, one website is rrrconsulting-publishing.com. Uh -huh. uh, you, you can email me directly through the site. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, all the social media sites, Pinterest. I'm out there everywhere. And I am Robin R. Robbins, by the way. Um, there are other Robin Robbins out there. So <laughs> if you find me, um, this is how you spell it right here with one B in the first name and two Bs in the last name and with the middle initial R, and so, other than, or it's RRR Consulting and Publishing. Awesome. So, uh, you can usually find me. Awesome, awesome. Thank you so much. Um, that concludes our first series, first of the series. It's, we're going to start 2013 with the goal setting. Um, look forward to more coming for all of our listeners, all of our clients. Uh, thanks for your time.